And so we now turn over the dedication page, and you've got all of the sonnets. Now, there's a lot of pages. I just go straight to the end page to show you that they're, they end here. The thing about the sonnets is they're all about time. All about time. They, he's always contrasting temporal time with spiritual time. And so it occurred to me, perhaps, they are a calendar. So I overlaid them over a 365-day calendar so that Sonnet 1 is January 1 and February 1 is Sonnet 32, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you then, you end at June 4th, so you have to send them through again and you end here. But if that was the poet's intention, it should be able to be easily proven that what he's done is given as a map upon which all the sonnets are overlaid onto a calendar date. And so if there's a, something that happens on a certain date that he wants to reference, he, he can say, all right, I'm going to write something in that particular sonnet, because each date has a unique sonnet number to it. So, for instance, the Queen's birth, the Queen's death, the Queen's funeral, these would be important to him. And you look at the sonnets that underlie those, and you read them from that perspective, and all of a sudden it makes sense. You go, oh, he's talking about that. These are Edward de Vere's children, the dates that they were born. And when you find the sonnets that are overlaid on those dates, the sonnets are telling you something cryptically about the birth of those children. And it happens with all kinds of historical dates as well. It's all over the place. But I'm going to show you three that basically prove this system. So I was looking at three particular interesting sonnet numbers. I looked at 116 because it's the only sonnet in the original printing where it's wrongly numbered. It goes 114, 115, 119, 117. Obviously, it's supposed to be 116. Well, 116 is here, and that's April 26. It's the wrong number. April 26, April 26 is when Shaxper, that's how he spelt it and, and pronounced it there, was baptized in, the, in that church. And the three crosses are supposedly the signature of his illiterate parents. Not a very good start to be the world's greatest uh, writer, but he had illiterate parents. But maybe that's just a clue. It's three crosses after all. So, it's 426, and it marks Shakespeare's baptism. So now I'm, you know, I'm looking at that and thinking, well, we got 426 in the monument, don't we? Interesting. So I'm now, is there anything else in that sonnet? You look down to the end of it, it says, if this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, no, no man ever loved. It's not an error, he's telling you. It's, it is an error, but it's deliberate. In fact, he says it's fixed. In fact, he says it's ever fixed. Evere fixed it like that. Interesting. So since that is telling us that the baptism date is wrong, the number is wrong, that's a lead. The baptism date has been fixed in order to create a code. So I now I want to look at 624, obviously the mirror image of it, because, you know, mirror imagery, that's what we got. Uh, if you're doing it the two ways that they used to code things back then. So what is June 24th? It's Sonnet 21. And Sonnet 21 has the word fixed in it. Okay, it says, and those gold candles fixed in heaven's air, which will make sense in a minute. 21, Sonnet says that. So what's special about 624? Well, in those days, calendar was all out of whack. 624 was the pagan calendar celebration of the summer solstice. Now we know it's June 21, 22, but back then it was all out of whack. We were on the Julian calendar. It was slowly slipping out of whack. Farming was off. Easter was off. The church didn't like that. They wanted to correct it, so they introduced the Gregorian calendar. It was a good thing. Science, right? They were figuring out how to get us back on track. But that was when they celebrated it back then. 624 was the summer solstice. Midsummer's Day. Midsummer's Night was the biggest celebration in England. That was 623 where they had the revels and the partying and the, and the dancing and the sex and the drugs, probably. And the next morning, 624, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, we won't do it again. It, and they all go to church. And they did because it was, <laughs> it, was, it was the feast day of St. John the Baptist. So the next day they had the religious day. But that was the way it's done. It's always done that way, right? Saturday night, Sunday morning. Cusp of passing over from Gemini into Cancer. That's what the summer solstice is. And it, this is the Freemasonic symbol for it. They have this, the cancer symbol, 6-9, as their, the, the touchstone at the top of the... It's representing the equinoctial cycle, the sun. What is that really doing? When you look at the sun, 
uh, it's rising, it's rising at a certain point. If you check it out every morning, it's going to rise here, and it seems to be moving, moving, moving towards the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. And all of a sudden, it kind of screeches to a halt because it's going to start going back. It's not going to start going back, but relative to the way we perceive it, right? So what happens at the solstice? Solstice itself means sol, sistere, Latin. It means the sun stands still. It comes like this. And so to the old agrarian farmer astronomers looking at it at first, they'd be going, oh no, the sun has died. It's, it's, it's died. That's literally what is happening. And then uh, after three days, it starts to move again. The sun in heaven has died. Destroy this temple and I shall build it up in three days again, Christ said. I do believe that is literally a metaphor for what's really going on with the astronomical truth of the situation. But that's it. That's cancer. In Gemini into cancer, 69. It's also the feast day, as I said, of St. John the Baptist, patron saint of, anybody know? Freemasons. But it's also the night, midsummer night, when Edward de Vere died on the cusp of the solstice, June 23rd, 24th, in the year 1604. How did he manage that? <laughs> That's when he died. No one wrote about it, though. No one said a word. He was the Lord Great Chamberlain of England, and there was dead silence. No, he didn't die. He just disappeared. He faked his own death the way it happened in the plays. But it's up to me to prove that, isn't it? So that's De Vere's death, fixed. That's Shaxba's baptism, fixed. The other one that has the word fixed in it, sonnet 101, fixed. Why 101? Sonnet 101 is the middle of this, the entire, there are 201 courses in the Great Pyramid, right? Up to the plateau, 201 courses. So the absolute center of course is course 101. That's the center of the Great Pyramid with 100 courses on each side. Same with the sonnets. He built the sonnets to be 201 stanzas, and there's the absolute center is 101. There's another center in the Great Pyramid that is of consequence, and that's the, the vertical center, which you we see from the air only at the equinox, right? When that shadow is visible for about 12 seconds, and then it's gone. It's measuring, it's marking out the equinoxes. Those are the periods of absolute equal night and equal day, equinox. But the other balancing features are the other polarities of the solstices, when you've got the longest day and the longest night. And they are measured out by the Great Pyramid in a different way. But look at the letters that he chose for Sonnet 21, 101, 106, the first letters, S, O, L, Sol, solstice. He's telling us it's about the sun, and it is marked by three queen's pyramids on the eastern border of the Great Pyramid, which measure and mark that by their shadows when the sun is fixed in heaven's air. Gold candles fixed in heaven's air. Fixed for one day. Fixed for a second day. Fixed for a third day. It stopped. It's fixed, and then it moves on. All right, so it's marking June 24th through June 26th as being very significant in those days, at that time in the pagan calendar. Now it's shifted a couple of days to the left. So we've got three sonnets then, and any time he uses three words only in the sonnets, it's always significant. I've done this with countless things. There's codes all over the place, and he uses the word three times only in the, in the 154 sonnets and the other poems that add up to 201 stanzas. He uses it only three times. So it's, it's always significant. Now we need to meet the guy who has encoded all this for the real Shakespeare. His name is John Dee.